All right, so one of the joys about liking locomotives is the opportunity to discuss things that frankly don't matter anymore and probably never did. This is one of those opportunities and the discussion is which class of locomotives informed the common name Pacific. All right, let's get into it. The first class of locomotives to roll off the production line and into service to be known as Pacifics was this class of locomotives here for the, for the Chicago, Rock Island and Pacific line. They weren't the inspiration for the common name, they were the recipient of it. There are only two serious contenders for the inspiration. One is the NZGRQ class of 1901, a Baldwin product. The other is the Missouri Pacific P69 class of 1902, a Brooks Alco product. Neither of those classes was the first 462. The wheel arrangements are separate from the common name in this instance and I'll be looking at the wheel arrangements in a subsequent video somewhere down the track. Anyway, candidate number one is the NZGRQ class. The contention is that the common name is a reflection of the input that the New Zealand design team at Addington had into the locomotive and thus the names Addington, BT, Pearson, for instance, are somehow magically related to the word Pacific and the word Pacific is a reference to the locomotives being exported from North America across the Pacific Ocean. Although it is a reasonable chance that they came by way of the Atlantic and around Cape Horn and across the Southern Ocean, but that's the story. The only claim in support of that contention is made three decades later in a 1930s equivalent to an in-flight magazine. The article that makes the claim is written by someone using a non-diplume, which strikes me as meaning it, that it was written by someone on the staff of the magazine because that particular edition was running short. The article lacks engineering nuance. It, for instance, makes the claim that the Pacific uses the Atlantic tail end, specifically the Atlantic trailing bogey. What the article fails to acknowledge is that in 1901, most Atlantics were built with a rigid trailing axle capable of some lateral motion, but it was by no means a radial axle, such as we see on the Pacific engines. There's no footnoting, there's no references, there's nothing to back up what is simply an assertion. That assertion has taken on the legitimacy of fact here in New Zealand, and as we saw earlier, it's taken on the legitimacy of fact internationally as well. What we do know is that the NZGRQ class appeared in the North American trade literature precisely once. And whilst it wasn't uncommon for New Zealand locomotives to appear in that trade literature, there is nothing to suggest when we look from 1901 through 1902 to 1903 in that literature that there was any mention at all that the 462 wheel arrangement ought to be called Pacific because of any reference to the New Zealand experience. The counterclaimant, the more realistic claimant, is the P69 class from the Missouri Pacific Road. A couple of things to note about the Missouri Pacific, it had the habit back then of identifying its locomotives based on the common name for wheel arrangements. So A for Atlantic, C for consolidation, followed by the height of the driving wheels, also TN for 12 wheelers. That approach, or an approach similar to it, was reasonably common across North America. The Chicago, Rock Island and Pacific example I talked about earlier was classified by that road as the P28 class. P for Pacific, 28 for 28,000 pounds of tractive effort. When the 1902 Missouri Pacific locomotive rolled into revenue service, it had already been classified as the P class. The reasonable assumption here is, based on Missouri Pacific's habit, is that P stood for Pacific. P69, Pacific 69 inch driving wheels. It's difficult to contemplate just how the Missouri Pacific and Brooks as the manufacturer came up with the title Pacific by any other means than a reference to the Missouri Pacific name. Subsequently, Alco built 
locomotives for the CNO, for the Northern Pacific, and of course for the Chicago, Rock Island and Pacific. So later when Elko adopted the white notation, the white wheel arrangement notation system, it also nominated a series of common names. And for the 462, it nominated Pacific. And at that time, Pacific featured in the names of three of its four customer roads for the 462 wheel arrangement. So it seemed a natural choice, and it seems to me a natural choice based on that first example, the Missouri Pacific P69s. Other literature that followed would refer to the 462 as, as the Pacific and as the St. Paul. St. Paul was a reference to the Milwaukee Road and their series of 462 locomotives that came into service about a decade earlier than the Missouri Pacific. Clearly, when you look at them, they are 462 locomotives, but they are also 10 wheelers with an extra idling axle behind the last drivers to help distribute weight. Now, a Pacific purist would point to that St. Paul locomotive and say it's not really a Pacific because the firebox is not supported almost exclusively by the trailing axle. I don't necessarily subscribe to the Pacific purist view. I think it's unfair to criticize a locomotive for not having something that the locomotive didn't need. But like I said, the issue of the 462 wheel arrangement is parallel but separate to the issue of the common name. And there are some candidates in those earlier 462s that should, I think, satisfy the Pacific purist. Right, comment below, NZGR or Missouri Pacific. Check on back if you're a purist because there's some 462s I want to run by you. And like, subscribe, enjoy. Cheers.